Chris, you got a question? <laughs> sure. Okay. You better <laughs> <if> he's other. <laughs> <laughs> On the uh, fake punt delay of game, how close was that to actually getting off? Did you guys like the picture that presented? Just how aggravating is it not to get the opportunity to run that play? Because obviously you showed it. I mean, it was frustrating. It was one that, um, you know, some weeks we carry it, some weeks we don't. Um, we thought uh, the, the look presented itself uh, for us uh, going into the week. It was something that we had worked on. Uh, the issue with it is it, it is a check. And, uh, you know, it's based on the look that we get. Uh, you know, being a little bit louder there, uh, communication took a little bit longer than, than uh, obviously desired. Uh, and we were probably half a second away from being able to get it off. Uh, but, you know, that, that starts with me in terms of, of creating that sense of urgency in the practice to, to make sure that we are able to get it off. But, um, you know, I, it, it could have been a, obviously a huge play in the game and it definitely is a missed opportunity since we weren't able to, uh, to get that run because it was obviously there and it was executed pretty well. That's it. Keon Coleman had a punt return. Well, I think he went back on that one, dropped the ball, and was able to. Was it that's just like, um, did he outkick his coverage, or is that like you guys like the blocking as well? Was it was a combination of both? Or? Pro probably a combination of both. I mean, obviously their their uh, their punter had a had a big night. Um, you know, he was you know he has very strong leg, and um, you know we did feel like if, if Keon was able to go get one, um, you know there would be an opportunity to at least get it started. And I thought our guys did a fantastic job blocking. Um, you know, Keon did a great job of setting some some blocks up and getting up into the return. And um, you know, that was a big play in the game. You know, we uh, I think we needed that at that moment. And uh, you know, that's one of the things that when we when we point at, uh, you know, you never know which play is going to be kind of the one. And uh, you know, we've been able to do that on special teams and spark some some uh, momentum shifts uh, throughout the course of this year. And I thought that was that was a big play in that game as well. Jordan. Coach Jared Burst and Patrick Payton played each around 50 snaps. You didn't rotate as much. How impressed with you above all about their stamina and the physicality that they did for a continuous 60 minutes? Well, you know, in the first half, we did uh, probably uh, rotate more than we did in the second half. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that kind of factor into that. One of them um, certainly is uh, how long the series are. You know, in the first half, um, you know, they were able to establish some, some longer drives. Uh, which keeps guys on the field a little bit more than, than you would maybe like. Uh, in the second half, you know, we were we were able to get a lot of three and outs. Um, There's a lot of TV timeout, a lot of media stuff going on in those nationally televised games. So there was a lot of time for them to rest in between series. Um, so I just thought just the sheer number of plays that we played in the second half was going to allow those guys to play more than uh, maybe they would typically play uh, in terms of splitting reps in the game. Or Two questions. First, have y'all played the best schedule of punters in the history of college football? <laughs> the Knight kid last night was better than the Duke kid. And did you know that going in, that he had that kind of leg? We did. I mean, we knew going in that he was a really good player. Um, you know, we had a, a high level of respect for who he was. And, um, you know, I think, I think there's a couple things that, that lead to that. I think uh, the training um, is, is probably so much better than it's ever been. Um, you know, I think, I think you know, now that that's the one position that we recruit really internationally um, across the board. So, um, you know, that, that was another Australian uh, uh, kicker. Um, you know, they tend to be older, so like these guys are like men now playing playing as well. But, uh, you know, there's, I think there's a lot that factors into it, but uh, we definitely have seen, seen some really good punters. But it, I kind of like it from the standpoint that it does allow us to get some returns started. I'd much rather play that and then have Keon have 15 yards of space before anyone's there. And the guys who's hitting at 30 and 35 yards, and there's people right on top of them every every play. And, and speaking of that, so the the punt right before the safety where it gets down at the six. When I watched the replay, Keon could have caught it at the eight, and there was some there was nobody even at the 20 yard line. He could have just caught it and run forward for about 10 or 12 yards. Did y'all have a talk after that, and that's why he went and caught the next one? And because it was a very similar situation on the punt return he had. So the 34 yards. I mean, I think there was three of them that were very similar. There was there was the one that, yeah, that checked up. Um, and, and they were able to down it. There was the one that he caught and ran back, but then there was the one that went in the end zone. And really what he was thinking on the one that, that checked up was that he thought it was gonna hit hard enough to go into the end zone. He was trying to draw uh, the touch back out of it. Um, Cause you know, and, and those are always the toughest calls to make, you know, and, and 
you know, like I like I said before, and I, and I reiterate with him all the time, I trust him. You know, and and you know, that sometimes he's going to make a decision that doesn't work out, but that doesn't mean that I want him to second guess some of the decisions he's making. Uh, you know, because I think every week he's getting better, and better, and more confident, and uh, you know, I just you know he's had three or four really explosive returns, so you know. The one I wish we would have fielded, right? That, that checked up at the, at the six, but um, I'm also glad he made didn't field the one that went into the end zone. So there can be a little bit of a catch 22 in, in terms of that. And um, you know, I just want him to make the best decisions he possibly can because I do trust who he is and, and his decision making ability. I, I don't, we spent a lot of time on a, a play that didn't matter in that big punt, but but is part of. Um, Getting that playoff on time, but also not, and you got to check to it, but not also like looking like you're rushing to a fake or something like that. Is that any part of it as well? No, you know, I, th I think, you know, when you watch, there's a lot of times we have to check our protections, you know, and, and so I, I don't think that part would have stood out. I do think uh, probably made a, a really big point of emphasis um, with the potential of crowd noise, with being on the road in that environment, of making sure that, that we over communicated. Because um, the worst thing that you can have happen is that not everybody's on the same page in terms of that. And, uh, you know, with, that, with all that being said, there still has to be great shot clock awareness. We still have to, to be able to snap it. And, you know, we, we probably missed it by about a, a half a second. Um, but, you know, I got to get them out faster. We got to operate with a greater sense of urgency. We probably needed to, to practice it with a greater sense of urgency, um, although the environment wasn't going to be the same. Um, but there, there's a lot of things that, that factored into it, but it was disappointing because it was a missed opportunity in a game where uh, we needed to get that spark, and that may have been able to, to bend that. That's it. Staying on the fake punt, I know all of might be silly questions, but in a game like that, when you're playing a desperate team, when you call a fake punt first, does it kind of take away, does it kind of take away the element of surprise that they, they may try to do it, like, because they had a fourth and one that kind of looked like a situation they could have done the fake punt as well in? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I've heard I've heard people say that that that, that you want to get your fake or your trick play run before they run theirs. But like being on the other side of it, if somebody else did that, like that doesn't mean that that we would have no intention of doing it later on. But um, you know, fourth and one, uh, we weren't going to allow that to happen. I mean, we were in our punt safe when when they were in that, so we left our defense on the field. Um, you know, and then in terms of just getting it, getting that, have that opportunity, really, you know. We try to be very aggressive in what we do on, from a special team standpoint. Um, you know, the reason why we faked the punt in, in that situation was because the look was there, and it was something that that we saw on tape that, and it was there. Um, the reason why we tried some of the onside kicks and some of the other things that showed up is because they presented themselves as being there as, and taking advantage of the opportunities. Um, you know, so we always want to look for for ways to spark. Uh, you know. A big play for us, and uh, you know when, when we see those opportunities, we certainly take advantage of. Them. We'll do that. Uh, I rest of the last one. Uh, Jared was pretty sensational. It was a sensational play in that game. Uh, did, what do you think that does for him? I mean, he's not a guy that lacks confidence, but I mean that's a you know that's a game that will be remembered individually for him as well. Oh yeah, no, it was it was his uh, his his opportunity to make a statement. Um, you know, and, and kind of have his have his place and and uh, you know seminal history in terms of, of big game rivalries. You know, it kind of reminded me a little bit. I thought about it afterwards of of how a couple years ago Jermaine had a really big game against Miami, and uh, you know he was able to get I think three sacks in that game and really forced a fumble. Did you know kind of really impacted that game? And I felt the same way 